Yeah, so we talked about, uh, today I'm going to talk about a new abstract data type called the symbol table or the hash table. And uh, we already saw stacks, queues, and lists. Lists are the most versatile among these. And these are linear data structures. I'm not sure whether I mentioned this, but basically it tells us that I can access the elements has uh, data arranged um, in a sequential manner. And uh, each member is connected to the previous and next element. And uh, actually we could add to this uh, also the array. All these are linear data structures, okay? Um, so what we saw in these data structures was that to access, for example, next element in the list, we have to go through the previous element. For example, the print listing, print list function that we have. So access the next element in the queue. in a queue, again, we have to go through the previous element. Now, these data structures are fine for uh, what we saw already, like, you know, building stats and queues um, with very specific um, functions. We also saw that uh, the list is good for polynomial multiplication, radix sort, and so on. Now, the um, but in the array, for example, we saw one example of sorting many examples of sorting and uh, two different examples of searching where we said linear search and binding search. What is the difference between the two of them? In linear search, the data need not be ordered. In binary search, the data must be ordered. That's what we said. Now what we're going to look at is a new type of a searching data structure, which is not, uh, it's actually not linear in the sense that you don't go from one element to the other. What we want is given a set of uh, elements n that are, um, that can be organized by a key um, on which we can um, we have a order relation <clears throat> how can we organize these uh, n items such that retrieval is very fast. Okay. 
let me give you an example. You know, uh, let's say all of you were in the institute and you were, uh, you had come back to the institute and had to register for courses. And uh, of course, if your uh, data is organized according to roll number, it will still require something like login based on the number of students to retrieve your record to see if you have completed the required prerequisites and so on. So on. On the other hand, on the other hand, can we devise an algorithm? which will uh, do some kind of a transformation and uh, to a particular address in T. T is an address in the T. And since generally for most of the elements, uh, one should be able to access access in almost constant time. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the question is, what kind of um, so it's like, you know, you have a set of keys, we have a set of N keys and we have a large table and we want to distribute Um, these keys such that there is minimal collision. Okay. So the question is, what I mean by this is, suppose I have a table like this, huge table. Properly. Like this, which has a large number of locations that can store the information. Now what we want is a hashing function which will map from key to A. Key is given and give us an address to the key. And the next K1 comes, let's say this is K0, gives me A0, leave me A1, and we want that this to be mapped to some other location. And so during search, for example, what do I have to do? We just need the key ki and h of ki should lead us to the location of the table where the item is stored. Is stored. So the question is, is it possible always possible to find mm, uh, locations that do not overlap.
for two different keys. Clearly, it's not going to be possible. So, even if it overlaps, how do we handle it? How do we handle this? Clearly, we can't use what we have learned already, namely the stack queue and list for um, stack queue and list for this particular problem because all of them are linear and we can go from the previous to the next. So if your element is last on the table, it's going to take a lot of time to access the element. So what I'm going to do is I am going to stop the share mode. To my slides here. So this is what we call a symbol table ADT. It is essentially a large table or a hash table. Okay. And the objective is to determine if a particular name is in the table, retrieves the attributes of that particular element, modify the attributes of that element, insert a new name and its attributes, delete a name and its attributes. We cannot use already saw this. <clears throat> And uh, so what you're going to do is how can you do better? The key idea is to use a hashing function, as I already mentioned. And there are two types of hashing called static hashing and dynamic hashing. In static hashing, identifiers are stored in a fixed size table called the hash table. The address of location of an identifier X is obtained by computing some arithmetic function, h on x. h of x gives the address of x in the table. The hash table uh, is set to be, uh, ht is set to be partitioned into b buckets. Where if you remember, this, remember we did the detail radix sort, where we had uh, actually um, put all the elements in different buckets, and then we found that when we did that, it was very fast sorting that we could do. It's a bit different, with a different kind of a function. There we use simply, uh, you know, uh, find the, divide the number based on its units, tens, hundreds, and so on. And what we're going to say is, suppose we have a B, just like we had in that particular, every pass, remember, it kept on increasing the number of elements that were there. Here, what we're going to say is, uh, we fix the number of items that can be stored in each one of the buckets. Let us say we have S records and H of X maps the set of um, possible keys into the zeros, zero through B minus one in the hash table. And within that, we will see how to organize it. So why should hashing be effective? So if you look at it, you know, it's some kind of, a, remember in radix sort we said, if you know there's an array ordering in terms of numbers, then you can order them much faster. So there's also something there, it's trying to put a numeric order on the data. Why is hashing effective? If I take an identifier, which is six characters long, then there are so many distinct possible values for X for the key. But any application only uses a very small fraction of this. That's the fundamental uh, property, why this works actually. Identifier, and you know, if you assume that the keys are, you know, uh, more or less uh, uniformly uh, distributed, unlike uh, perhaps names in a class. Um, you know, I remember when I um, started teaching here in IIT a long time ago, there will be a lot of names with Shirok Kumar. And then we had a lot of names. Bumshi, for example, is a very common name again. Ravi Teja, repeated names. But generally, you will find that still repetitions are going to be small. And uh, as long as the repetitions are not um, 
very large identifier density let's say n is the total number of elements n by t where total number of possibilities is this n is the number of identifiers and t is a total possible set of identifiers so this is your identification density and there's something called a loading factor what we saw is each uh, there are b buckets and each bucket can store h items and uh, the loading factor is n by sp we say that two hashed values are synonyms if they hash to the same value that means there is a collision a new identifier l is hashed into a full bucket that can also called happens in overflow that is if i have already exceeded the s items in a bucket then there's an overflow in the particular bucket and uh, collision is when two like l1 and l2 hash to the same bucket we call this a collision so collision handling and overflow are the important problems in a hash table so here is an example i have a hash table with 26 buckets and two slots per bucket so what do i do i have a a2 and so on g a g these are the various strings that are there i just use the letter first letter of the alphabet in that particular string to map to one of those buckets okay and i've just taken some arbitrary list over here so a hash function transforms an identifier x into its bucket x. There are many techniques for transforming a key into its bucket address. Square the identifier and then use an appropriate number of bits from the middle to the obtain the uh, bucket address. Something like this and take the five digits as a hash index. Or transform again, for example, the number of buckets is n take the x and then do a model divide the identifier compute the remainder when x is divided by m and use this as the hash address folding partition the identifier into different parts add partitions and use this as the address there are many many different ways of um, doing a um, um, uh, you know, uh, defining hash functions, and then finally you could use a mod depending upon the hash table size. Okay, so the uh, question is how um, how do we handle? Uh, there's a technique called uh, what I'm going to do. Is, sorry, I don't have the slide for the next one. Uh, let me go back to my iPad. Um, now we saw that uh, we took an example where the hash table